I think that's us, Steph. Okay, good to go. Fantastic. So um, welcome to the session today. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Stephanie Hanson and today I'm joined by Rish and I'm also joined by Ellie. Rish is a graduate weapon systems engineer and Ellie a graduate mechanical engineer. Um, so um, over the course of this session we'll be discussing a number of things and we'll be looking at uh, you know directly what diversity means to us based on the experiences that we've had in the business but also how business the business supports uh, diversity and inclusion. We'll also look a little bit around at the graduate experience as a whole and what's involved, what you can expect if you were to um, enter onto a BA systems graduate scheme. Uh, there will be an opportunity at the end to ask questions. So if you want to think of those throughout or post those in the chat, we will address them directly um, and it'll be a good opportunity to learn more about the scheme and also about how the business supports diversity and inclusion. Okay, so if we go on to the next slide. Steph, sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Can we just make sure? Can we make sure people can hear us? Can someone let us know if you can see and hear us? Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So we're good to continue. Um, so just to give a bit of an overview around who we are and what we do. Um, so um, obviously we work on uh, the world's most advanced technology-led defense, aerospace and security systems. Um, and, you know, that's across all of our sectors, air, maritime, line, land and cyber domains. And we work on a full range of products as well. Worth noting that we do work closely with a range of SMEs, regional partners that does include you know universities as well and equally our supply chains um, to ensure that we are delivering uh, delivering cutting edge technologies products and services to our customers uh, we do uh, currently employ 87,800 employees in more than 40 countries, so truly a global organization. Um, in addition, we work really closely with local partners to support economic and social development um, through the transfer of knowledge, skills, and technology. Um, and not only that, we do invest you know, a lot in developing our people within the business, and uh, we provide support to local communities as well um, through charitable donations and sponsorship as well. So just to give a bit of an overview of our strategy and how that underpins everything that we do, um, our strategy is supported by five long-term areas that you can see in front of you. That is to maintain and grow our defense and security businesses, to continue to grow our business in adjacent markets, develop and expand our international business, inspire and develop a diverse workforce to drive success and enhance financial performance and deliver sustainable growth in shareholder value. Value. Um, so these are our strategic objectives and they provide a link between our longer term strategy but also our near term business objectives for all of our employees. Uh, overall our main miss mission is to provide that vital advantage to help our customers and to protect what really matters and this is underpinned by our values that you can see at the bottom of this framework which are trusted, innovative and bold. So just a, an infographic in front of you, um, which is designed to show, you know, the number of employees that we have across the board. As I said before, a truly global organization with leading positions in principal markets in the US, UK, Kingdom of South America. Saudi Arabia and Australia um, so that's you know a huge thing that we have to to be able to boast that we do have a truly global workforce and that we are able to collaborate on a number of projects to deliver on our commitments to our customers so that concludes uh, the introduction to the to the presentation gives you a bit of an idea around BAE systems what it is we do um, you know where we work and what we are driving towards um, I'm now going to pass you over to Rish he'll give you a bit of a more in-depth insight into his personal experiences on the scheme and also his relation to DNI within BAE &E systems perfect thank you Stephanie um, Hi everyone, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Um, thank you for taking the time out on thir Thursday, <laughs> Thursday, isn't it? Um, Thursday afternoon 
Um, must say I'm delighted to sort of be here uh, sharing my experiences. I love sort of doing these events and DNI, which is sort of personally close to me. It was uh, when the opportunity sort of came up. Um, I didn't have to think twice before sort of nominating myself to do this presentation. So um, we'll kick things off with a bit of a about me. Um, my name is Rishab Singh, uh, but feel free to use Rish in your questions and or the chat. I only tend to get Rish out when I've done something bad or I'm in trouble um, around the house. So yeah, feel free to use Rish. It's reaching the quarter century mark uh, next week, actually. So looking forward to the day, but not the date. Um, Currently, I'm in. Gra I'm a graduate. I joined the company back in September. Um, I'm working within weapon systems engineering, uh, predominantly on our Typhoon platform. Um, so the role that I'm in just now is very customer facing. We tend to do all the sort of the qualification and the um, certification aspect of things for uh, both um, all of our contracts. Um, so the sort of the document, documentation that goes along with it, um, with any sort of modifications that are to go on the aircraft. Um, as well as that, it has a sort of like a project management type of aspect to the role as well. Uh, you're managing sort of our high profile contacts and having that interaction with the customer and with the project teams to sort of get things over the line and meet our deliveries. So it's, um, it's a very fun and rewarding job and I'm loving sort of um, every minute of it. And the fun fact about me, um, I must say this was probably the longest um, time I spent during this presentation trying to think of, of a fact and came to realize there wasn't a lot of fun things going on for me at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd reminisce back to my school days and um, yeah, at my school prom, I won the, won the Teacher's Pet Award, um, being a bit of a goody two-shoes and still am to be honest. Um, so yeah, moving on to the next slide. Um, I graduated with a master's in aeronautical engineering from the University of Glasgow. Um, I graduated last year um, and whilst I was in uni, whilst I was, uh, my course is um, sort of five years long, um, I, ha I was fortunate enough to be awarded a sponsorship with BAE Systems. So I'd done a summer in 2017, and then uh, depending upon your performance, you came back and done an industrial placement. And then if you were, if you met the sort of the criteria, both with qualification, et cetera, you get an offer automatically back into the grad scheme. So that was my route into the company. Um, during my placement times, um, I've been lucky enough to work on different platforms. During my summer uh, placement, I worked on the F-35, uh, looking at sort of the aero structures and prognostics and testing and support for the platform, where we mainly dealt with Lockheed Martin out in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and then during my placement year um, I was working on a future combat air vehicle Tempest which some some of you may have heard of it's not due to come out in sort of the 2030s uh, but it was it was really it was really good to work on the sort of the concept research side of things and looking at the aerodynamics of this aircraft etc um, so that was my placement time um, looking forward looking into the future um, I have applied to get my chartership so that's in the process. So in the <laughs> hopefully not so distant future, uh, I want to get my CNs through. And due to the sort of the global nature of BA systems, um, I want to do a couple of placements um, internationally. So one of our main uh, export customers, Qatar, um, maybe do a placement out there or go do a secondment in Australia, that kind of thing. And I think um, one of the one of the things that I wanted to touch on that the that I've really personally enjoyed was the opportunities that we have av available to do any training that we think might be beneficial for us um, in terms of our own personal development in addition to end the st long stretch assignments that we have available within the company um, I mean through like during my placement year I had the opportunity to go to a course at University of Oxford which was an experience in itself but the company is always sort of you have the backing if you want to if you feel like something might add something to your development if you feel like you want to really do something um the company is always very supportive in uh, letting you go do that
So I just had a connection problem. Um, in terms of long stretch assignments, that's where the leadership experience comes in. So um, if you have, say, kind of like me, if you if you have um, sort of aspirations to get a managerial role and sort of work your way up towards a company, you have the opportunity to start from young and start managing little projects and little teams and assignments, that kind of stuff, to build up that portfolio and build up that um, experience which will come in handy sort of later down the line as you progress through the company. So on top of your day job, these are some of the sort of the stretch assignments I've been involved in. Um, I think one of the, the photo you see on the right was um, back in 2019, we, um, we designed engineering taster weeks for the company and, uh, as a whole, where 40 students from across the UK um, got the chance to come work at BA Systems and see what it feels like to be an engineer in BA Systems. We sort of, they stayed with us uh, for the week. We sort of took them around our simulators and basically showed them sort of all the technologies and stuff that we have and showed them around the aircraft and showed them the hangars, et cetera. Um, and it was, a, it was a really, really good event and it was um, attended by our CEO, Charles, for which um, he was very impressed with sort of what we had done and sort of the, with the main objective of the thing in mind to give people that experience of what Sorry, I just think we're having some issues with Rish there. So hopefully he'll be able to rejoin um, and then carry on with his part of the presentation. No, I still can't hear you, Rish, unfortunately. There we go. Hiya, sorry. Did did I cut off there? Am I? Yes. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you're having some that. network issues. Yeah, apologies for that, everyone. Um, can I? <laughs> where did I get to? Sorry, I can't. I can't really remember. <laughs> no. Um, I think if I think we'll sort of move on from the assignment stuff, and if anyone has any questions at the end, feel free to ask the questions, and then um, I'll try and answer them. Um. So moving on to the sort of the main sort of aspect of today, um, the importance of uh, diversity and inclusion in my sort of experiences of it. I think we can sort of all agree on the importance of um, diversity and inclusion within a workplace. And when it came to picking my employer when I was applying for the sort of the placements and um, my um, when you guys will be going through not in the not so distant future it was an incredible um sort of important thing for me because it kind of if you there's a lot of aspects to it you can if you don't have if you're if the sort of the place you're applying for doesn't have the right resource groups if it doesn't have the right sort of support then you want you you don't you want to be sort of not not be a part of it you want to have something that um the company is doing something to about your values about your sort of aspirations that kind of thing 
So I think um, when I joined the company, I had sort of like a brief, um, I had a brief read for before I joined the company and attended event events such as this. And I think within, uh, without sort of speaking too broadly, I think within the world there's, uh, whilst we have um, legislation in place of sort of gender equality and sort of equal pay and um, disability acts, I feel like some of the big hitters such as LGBT and mental health don't get as much recognition as they deserve. So I think, um, and it's been it's been sort of good to see since I've joined the company, sort of the resources that are available. So, so I'm part of Outlink UK. So even though uh, I don't identify as a member as sort of the LGBT community, um, I am a LGBT ally, so I'm um, sort of actively take part in um, making sure there's a for our uh, employees that are LGBT. There's um, sort of events and sort of rallies that take place in the not not the COVID world, obviously, but um, sort of events that take place, and we're actively um, and I'm actively involved with them. And the company is really trying to make. Um, everyone feel welcome regardless of sort of what they identify as um, and I think one of the things that I've found recently uh, which is really came into effect due to the pandemic is this sort of the men aspect of things when I had done the placements obviously I was in the office and then since joining the company with you having to work from home it can take a it can take a real sort of a really big impact on your mental health you're not able to be in the working environment I mean I've not met anyone uh, personally since I from my team since I started to be honest uh, and um, to get around that um, we have sort of well-being and social reps so within the graduate community we organize events almost every couple of weeks so we can keep in touch with all of our peers you do that on your departmental level as well you have sort of daily scheduled calls etc um, so the the company is really putting an impetus to handle the sort of the unforeseen sort of circumstances that we're in at the moment and a couple of other things that i feel that have really enhanced my experiences I've not covered uh, during my placement year I was a part of an event called um, get into engineering and sort of a, cav a sort of like a follow-on event from that was girls into engineering I feel like within so studying an engineering degree and sort of coming through working in the defense industry you'll find it is quite a male dominated industry and the company ha is trying to sort of move away from that and encourages girls into the industry so from a very young age and we tend to do events such as this to raise awareness of sort of everything that we're doing to and to spark that interest within the sort of the female um population and um encourage people and just show them that engineering is just not sort of like a male dominated it's not sort of all about males it is currently a male dominated industry but sort of we're hoping to uh move away from that and create a more inclusive environment uh, and I think lastly, uh, when you go on secondments and when you sort of go to a different company, we do cultural training and we do sort of information evenings to raise that inf to raise sort of um, information about different sort of ethnicities, different sort of festivals. Like recently, I attended a um, an information evening on a festival called Diwali, which is uh, from hinduism um and it's, it's just good to see that the company takes this uh these things seriously and they uh, they do sort of events such as this to actively make everyone feel inclusive and celebrate their things as well as um as well as sort of everything that's celebrated naturally as well Okay, so this is, I won't talk on, ramble on for too much longer. This is sort of the last um, slide in my section. Um, hints and tips, I think one of the one of the biggest things, what, one of the biggest reasons why I included this slide was just to have that bit of personal reflectiveness, that per, sort of like give you the chance to reflect, uh, reflect on the kind of the things we're saying to you today, is um, when you're choosing your employer, it, it's really important that you sort of look back on yourself and you look at your background, you look at your values and aspirations. And aspirations is kind of like a weird one. You might think sort of why I've included it, but I think when I was coming in to this company or sort of when you go into a big company, you're always 
kind of aware of whether you can progress and when say if you're going for an executive role when you're going for sort of roles higher up whether you'll have an equal opportunity as someone else to go for that role and I think it's one of the sort of the one of the things that I've found really really good since I've joined the company is you see people from ethnic minorities in those roles high up so it kind of shows the company treats you on your merit and your experience rather than or sort of your identification that kind of thing so it's been it's been a really positive experience for me um and it's just i would just encourage you to think about what you believe in and what your aspirations are and what your background are, background is before making um a decision on your future empl employer and one thing to keep in mind would be um there's not anyone that, that there, there won't be a company that's basically a hundred percent um sort of diverse and inclusive but I think it's important to see if a company is actively taking part in making sure it's doing things um, which we are doing um, to create a more inclusive and diverse environment for everyone to work in um, and be a part of but yeah no I think I think that's my part sorry so I'll pass you on to Ellie uh, if you have any questions for me uh, feel free to type and type them in the questions bar and we'll pick them up at the end Okay, thank you, Rish. Uh, so yeah, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ellie. So I first of all going to talk about a little bit of background uh, about me. So I went to university at Southampton where I studied mechanical engineering uh, with an automotive theme. I joined BAE Systems first in 2018 um, as an industrial placement student, similar to Rish did that. Um, so for my year in industry at university, uh, I first worked in maritime services uh, in the radar sector. Uh, I then rejoined the company last year in September as a graduate on their Accelerate scheme uh, and this time going on to work in underwater weapons team uh, in maritime services. Uh, so a little bit more about my placement. So I completed my placement uh, between my second and third years of university. Um, I actually had a couple of options for a placement year um, but I actually chose BA Systems originally uh, due to the location. So the placement was based in Cowes in the Isle of Wight which was uh, where I had my family and they were living at the time. So this actually meant I could stay with them and effectively not have to pay rent for that year, which was great. Uh, so yeah, I started off in the radar sector. The first team uh, I was with was the Future Radar Development Programme. So we were looking at um, future radar products, so quite a lot of research and analysis, looking at concept designs at very early stages of the project. Um, I then moved on to the Samson and Artisan radar teams. Uh, this is quite different as uh, these are sort of more established products and the work was mostly future upgrade, uh, working and you know, solving any issues that came up or doing some redesign or physical testing. Um, so eventually, uh, at the end of the placement, uh, we were given ratings and I was very happy that I received uh, an outstanding rating, which meant I was automatically offered a place on the graduate scheme once I finished my degree. Uh, so yeah, moving on to the graduate role. Uh, so yeah, I now work in underwater weapons team. Uh, primarily on the Spearfish product, uh, which is uh, Spearfish being our heavyweight torpedo. Uh, so this role is based in Portsmouth at our Broad Oak site. Um, as you can probably see behind us, uh, most of us are still obviously working from home primarily. Uh, the graduate scheme itself is called Accelerate, that's what I'm on, and it's an 18 month minimum scheme. So it's a flexible duration scheme uh, due to the fact that BAE recognises that uh, different individuals develop at different rates. Uh, so the role is it's one substantive role, across that duration and you move straight into a full-time role once you exit the scheme. Um, alongside this everyday role, uh, there are also several personal development modules and opportunities for stretch assignments, uh, which give you opportunities to sort of broaden and develop different skills. Uh, for example, ones you perhaps don't use as much in your everyday role. Uh, they also have the opportunity to do one-to-one -one coaching sessions, uh, which can help with your development throughout the scheme. So diversity and inclusion. So I'm going to talk a bit now obviously about what that means to me um, as well as share some of my experiences and thoughts on uh, DNI in BA systems. Uh, so what does DNI mean to me? Well quite simply DNI means to me that everyone regardless of their age, gender, race, background or sexual orientation you know can feel safe and supported in their everyday lives and specifically here uh, in their work environments. Uh, so this is so important you know, that everybody feels able to express their opinions freely and they're able to be themselves without any fear of judgment or bias and that they have access to any and all support they might need to perform uh, to their full potential. 
Uh, so my experience as DNIBA. So this slide here shows a few of the uh, employee resource groups and schemes I'm involved in. So I'll explain a little bit more about these in a minute. So my experience. So when I first joined in 2018, you know, I wasn't surprised to find that in a defense based, uh, mostly engineering company, that it was a very male dominated environment. Um, I was the only female industrial placement in my particular cohort uh, in maritime services at the time, but this wasn't a surprise to me. Um, I did worry, however, obviously, that my gender could be an issue. Um, I did worry that being young and female, I wouldn't be taken seriously. Um, this happily wasn't uh, the case at all for me. I was really pleasantly surprised that I was treated like a valued colleague, my opinion was listened to, and I was given lots of exciting opportunities to develop myself as an engineer and as a person. I mean, of course, it wasn't all perfect. I did notice a couple of issues when I first joined. Uh, for example, uh, the work experience week we had with um, kids from the local schools occurred just as I started. And I noticed that there was not even one girl on the work experience week. So I mentioned this to one of my colleagues and they suggested that I join a group at the CALS site, uh, which was actually discussing this at the next meeting. And so this is when I got the opportunity uh, to join the Isla White Education Ambassadors group at the CALS BAE site. So this was a great opportunity for me. I absolutely loved it. We had regular meetings and discussions on these sorts of topics. I was able to become official STEM ambassador. I did uh, careers days promoting careers in STEMs. I gave talks to young girls on what it's like to be a female engineer and to encourage them to consider careers in STEM. I also took part in B's uh, Schools Engineering Challenge where we went into schools and uh, did lessons on the basics of ship design and got them to build model boats to race and perform in different challenges against other schools. So I found it, yeah, it was a really rewarding and I felt like I had a really good opportunity to give quite a lot back during my placement. So yeah, I, I enjoyed working with B so much in my placement year and I felt very safe and supportive within my career and I love the stretch opportunities I was involved with and I was also very encouraged by the way that DI and I was progressing quite quickly in BAE. So I definitely decided to uh, take up the offer to rejoin the company, even though I had originally planned to go into the automotive industry. That was my sort of initial sort of thing that I was really interested in. I just felt really comfortable and happy with what I was doing and I wanted to stay on uh, and continue with the company. Uh, so, yep, here I am in slightly different circumstances due to COVID. Um, but I have still, despite this, had lots of opportunities to get involved with various initiatives. And I've actually seen some great steps forward uh, from BAE and DNI since I've been back. So a couple of things I've seen since I've been come back since uh, last September. So we've had National Inclusion Week last October I got involved with. Um, lots of talks on all aspects of DNI, from mental health to using DNI as an enabler for success. We had interesting speakers talking about their experiences, as well as leaders at BAE talking through plans to keep pushing our business forward with regards to DNI. I've also been involved with um, another Target Jobs event, talking to future female engineers about opportunities at BAE. I've joined uh, the Maritime Services Inspiring Women Network, where we've been involved with International Women's Day. Uh, had lots of talks from prominent inspiring people both from within BAE and outside. Um, actually recently we had uh, Edwina Dunn OBE. She came to talk to us from, you might have seen it on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, it's uh, the female lead. Um, and now we are preparing for uh, International uh, Women in Engineering Day in June. So I just want to check, can you, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can, Ellie. Yep. Sorry, I just see one person said they can't hear you. They can't hear me. Okay, okay. It seems like the majority of you can. That's good. Um, hopefully, whoever that was can get back onto that. But I'll, I'll just carry on for now. Um, so yeah, just to sort of finish off my section, I'm going to run through quickly uh, some of the ERGs, uh, which are the employee resource groups and initiatives that I've been mainly involved in and have really enjoyed. Um, so here's a few of these here. So first one I'll talk about is the Inspiring Women's Network. So this is a smaller group um, specific to maritime services. It's kind of a sector off from the main GEN network, which is the BAE Systems Wide Gender Equality Network. Um, so this group is mainly focused on women within the business, making sure they have a support network and a voice um, to make sure we continue to develop BAE into a positive environment for women to work in where they feel uh, comfortable and empowered in their everyday roles and also to be a safe space to bring up and address 
and generate awareness um, of any issues within the company, which of course there are still uh, many that need to be need to be addressed. Um, it's a wonderful, strong community, and we're implementing a lot of positive initiatives, creating networks for women, and also still doing uh, STEM outreach as well. So uh, personally, I'm the early careers lead for the network. So I make sure there's a link between early careers, uh, people such as graduates and placement students, apprentices, um, you know, to the network, so their voices can be heard. So our main mottos and aims of this, of this group is to create, to, to change, to inspire, to educate, and to share. Um, oh yeah, so next, I mean, as I mentioned before, I'm heavily involved with um, STEM activities, which is great. At the moment, that does involve doing, you know, a lot of virtual careers days or virtual work experience, but we're still trying to do as much as we can. And I think it's just, it's really pertinent to encourage that sort of diversity and inclusion at as early an age as possible. Um, you know, make sure that young people know that they are valued and that they have the choices to do whatever they want. Um, finally, from, from me, um, I'm also an active ally for both Outlink UK and VetNet. Uh, so Outlink UK, I think, as Rich said, is our LGBTQ plus network. So it's very important to me that everyone, regardless of their sexual preferences, feels safe and supported at BAE. Um, and VetNet, that's our support network for veterans and reservists. So my dad actually was a veteran, so this is quite important to me personally. Uh, and it's important because as a company, we have a large number of veterans actually working at BAE. Um, and it's very important to support them in adjusting to civilian life, which could be quite a cultural shock for, for some of them and making sure they have the access needed to any mental health or other support needed to help them adjust. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit from me. It's a little overview of what um, I'm getting involved in. So I will pass you across now to Stephanie to talk about her experiences. Great, thanks for that, Ellie. So. So yeah, my, um, as I said at the start of the presentation, my name's Stephanie and I'm currently working as an HR graduate, particularly in the field of talent and performance. And I have been in the business since uh, January, 2020. Um, so just to give a bit of an overview of, of how I got here, I suppose that my experiences were, were fairly atypical to a degree. So I actually studied education at university and then went on to do um, a master's in English literature, um, got involved with various societies there, you know, theater, film societies, exposed to lots of different people. And really from that side of things, realized that I, I love sort of developing people, running training sessions, education sessions around things that I felt passionate about. Um, and that led me into while I was at university doing lots of teaching actually at international summer schools, preparing them um, for all sorts of tests, you know, individuals from uh, across the world were attending those. So I think combination of those experiences led me to a real interest and love in, in developing people, particularly developing, you know, um, individuals uh, across the board with all sorts of experiences. And that naturally led me to the world of L&D and eventually HR. And I saw a real opportunity there to support individuals within the business, uh, to work with individuals to understand their strengths and aspirations and to really support, you know, individuals with all sorts of experiences, um, perspectives and backgrounds to um, excel within the area that they were working. So uh, yeah, like I said, joined the scheme in Jan 2020, um, very quickly was required to work from home because of the, the pandemic and the rapid changes there. And that actually massively changed the nature of my role. So um, I uh, very quickly got involved with uh, working from home and supporting those working from home. And that was a real eye opener because, uh, you know, working in very different circumstances, you know, geographically dispersed teams, uh, really important therefore to make sure that we were connecting with people in the business that we were understanding, um, you know, what their experiences were, that we were sort of recognising that people, you know, might uh, have different situations and it might not be easy for them to work from home, but, you know, making adjustments where necessary um, and equally doing those regular touch, uh, touching base with the individual to understand how they were doing through the pandemic, you know, lots of focus, as was said before, around well-being uh, through both the comms and engagement that we did, but also through the support, guidance and resources that we were pulling together. 
Um, so in terms of what I actually do in my role, I do a range of things. Um, and uh, like I said, talent and performance was, is the main part of my role. And we do a lot from that perspective to support um, both diversity and inclusion. Um, so not only sort of looking on a regular basis at the, the representation of, of, of gender um, in terms of, you know, things like ratings, but also, um, you know, support and the performance and the development that's out there for individuals um, but we also look at developing guidance so guidance that's very much around the behaviors that we value in the organization um, which is you know around providing development opportunities for all individuals and really supporting that uh, future focused workforce that is you know inclusive and is welcoming to everyone you know regardless of your background or your sexual orientation or the experiences that you've had so we do a lot from that angle to you know sort of drive the education for for line managers and to continue to drive those behavioral shifts and changes that we, we are working towards. Um, I think as well, um, we've done lots from, a, as, as I said before, from a working from home perspective, um, just to, to bring the spotlight uh, to mental health in particular. So within our business unit, I know that there have been podcasts and there have been explorations of, of people who've gone through uh, different experiences just to show that, you know, absolutely um, don't, don't feel, you know, afraid of, of talking about those experiences and sharing those because it sparked actually a really positive response where we are. And, you know, as a result, more people are, you know, speaking out about their experiences and sharing and realizing that you know that there is that um, you know lots of people have been through a similar thing so I think it's been a real eye opener from that perspective and lots of positive sh shifts have happened uh, particularly in our business unit with regards to uh, mental health as well. So uh, I know that some of the other graduates talked about stretch opportunities and I think absolutely if you want to um, accelerate your career and your development there are so many different opportunities to get involved in a range of things uh, that are aligned with your interests and to sort of express your your voice and your perspective so I know um, you know again from my sort of experiences that I, I have that love for you know development and learning and supporting that so I've been heavily involved in you know how we, how we look at the HR function as a whole and how we ensure that we are providing those development opportunities for all across the board. Um, also, um from an HR engaged perspective, working really closely there to talk about, you know, how do we um, become more inclusive around our global community? How do we get more voices and representation uh, spotlighted as a result of, um, you know, that particular form of uh, engagement with the HR community? How do we show that we are um, being inclusive in, of individuals across the board? Um, and also, I think, you know, working closely on a relationship with colleagues work stream to understand exactly what it is like as a graduate coming new into the business perhaps you don't know people perhaps you might be in an area that's not so diverse really attempting to understand what's happening there and how we can support those individuals you know um, sort of provide uh, that level of a network and security and also improve the experience of everyone who enters the business um, and lastly recognition schemes so I, I think that's a massive thing as well in terms of uh, you know diversity and inclusion in the sense of you know gender background and uh, uh, you know sexual orientation but also in the sense of that you know our particular business unit is, is so diverse in terms of the backgrounds that people look, uh, come from you know where they work and the experiences that they've had you know educational opportunities so this recognition scheme is really about you know recognizing individuals across the board who've made a significant contribution um, you know whoever they are wherever they work just making sure that we are getting that you know broad representation of, of those who, who've gone above and beyond to support our business unit. So um, in terms of the graduate scheme, you know, lots of great opportunities to access development opportunities, you know, um, as was mentioned before, there are mentoring opportunities, coaching opportunities, stretch activities that you can get involved in. And there's so much guidance and support, you know, uh, particularly in our business unit. Again, you know, there's been lots of um, support around this time when we're, uh, lots of individuals are working from home. Um, so uh, information around, you know, mental health guidance and, and regular check-ins have been really useful there. Um, I think as well, you know, once you come into the business, uh, they usually do a really good job of introducing you to all the other functions, uh, giving you opportunities to bond with some of the other graduates and make those connections and to, to really start to feel like you belong in that community. And there are other opportunities as well to develop your personal effectiveness as an individual, which I, I know I hugely valued.
So just a brief summation of my experience of DNI in the business. You know, everyone um, that I've worked with has been, you know, incredibly supportive. What I, I really appreciate is that they see me, um, you know, on the basis of my merit, and I can speak to my experience here, and and that you know it's always been about you know the quality of the work that I produce, and I think that's really good if you have ambitions and you want to sort of shine and demonstrate your capability. You want a business that will see you, um, you know, for your your potential, but also for everything that you can bring, your unique perspective, and and my experience has really been involved with that. I think as well from business unit perspective, I can see that they are clearly committed to, to progressing, you know, that diversity and inclusion agenda. Um, and not only, you know, at a sector level as well and an enterprise level, we are, we are really looking at those, you know, metrics to understand who is coming into the business. How can we, you know, increasingly attract a range of, you know, individuals um, from different backgrounds? How can we, you know, retain as well some of that talent coming from, from, from different areas as well? Um, so there's there's a lot of work being done to understand that population and how we can be more inclusive in our talent practices and in our development practices as well. So I think, you know, definitely moving in the right direction. Lots going on as well in, in local communities to, to drive increased uh, female representation within engineering. Um, so I think it's, it's worth uh, noting that the business is demonstrating that commitment to improving and continuing along the lines of becoming a more diverse and inclusive organisation. Okay, so I will, uh, ah, one final slide, sorry. Um, so uh, just a few other things to note. So, you know, really important that, you know, coming to the business, you do have those uh, new perspectives, perhaps different background and experiences. Important to to be proactive, to, to not sort of shy shy away from sharing your opinion. You know, your, your opinions are valued and we want to create a place where everyone feels like they can, you know, make suggestions or suggest ideas or feel able to contribute. Um, you know, don't be afraid to discuss your aspirations, particularly from a gender perspective. I think sometimes can people can, uh, you know, be slightly shy around that, but absolutely be, be enterprising, you know, be courageous. And I think if you build your networks and meet new people and, and of, also, you know, not underestimate what you're capable of. There's lots that you'll be able to achieve within the organization. Okay, on to the global um, diversity and inclusion vision statement. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. I'm gonna quickly talk about, uh, so BAE Systems is a global organization. Uh, so here, obviously, you can see on the slide, this is our global DNI vision statement. Um, so basically, obviously, talks about, you know, um, how BAE is committed to becoming a more inclusive and diverse workforce um, and, and our beliefs that um, having employees from all the different backgrounds and with all lots of unique experiences and beliefs and insights can actually help us sort of drive our company, drive innovation, you know, enhance employee engagement, accelerate performance, you know, and it will actually help us to differentiate and strengthen our competitive advantage. Uh, so to the main sort of objectives we have uh, within our business strategy we have here in, in the orange. So to attract and retain a diverse workforce that reflects market availability at all levels of the organization. And also to advance an inclusive workplace where leaders can effectively retain uh, key talent and employees feel that their differences are valued and internationally leveraged. So for me, I think this slide, it shows that as a company, you know, we don't look at DNI as a numbers game. You know, we strongly believe that having a diverse and inclusive workforce will allow us to strengthen our business and increase our competitive advantages. We will have the best people from all walks of life and the best talent who feel uh, supported um, and appreciated. Um, so the next slide. So here, uh, this slide shows us uh, our five-year plan for our DNI ambitions. So the main ones I think I'd like to pick out from here at the moment are uh, obviously are looking at increased levels of representation. So for example, female and sort of ethnic minority representation, that's quite very important to us. Um, increased uh, ERG, so employee resource group membership. So that's to get as many of our employees as possible involved in these important areas and make sure all um, our voices are heard. And finally, I think quite important is having purposeful leadership commitment for DNI. That's getting high numbers of visible senior role models involved in DNI. You know, I think that's the key to reaching that wider audience in the company and making sure that we continue to make that cultural change. Um, next slide. So this slide here it illustrates that we have a responsibility uh, to create a diverse and inclusive environment 
no one person, uh, leader or team uh, can do this on their own. You know, we all must play our part. And I believe this is what we are trying to achieve here at BAE Systems. Okay, so um, just rounding off sort of um, the presentation, um, only got a couple of slides left. Um, I think uh, what you see here uh, are some of the resource groups that we have at BA Systems. Um, as you can see, uh, so we've got sort of um, representations or sponsors from all the way from the top of the company. So Charles Woodburn, who is our CEO, um, him and Karen. Karen is uh, the HR director and from the top they're sort of like overlooking all these resource groups and even the sponsors sort of globally. I mean they are some of the highest people you can get within the business. You have the likes of Chris Boardman um, who's a group managing director for AIR. You've got or sort of um, strong who I've spoken to before, Ben Hudson. I mean, these are people sort of really, really high up within our business. And you, so you can see the amount of sort of impetus that we place on these resource groups. And it's not just because we feel, uh, we feel that it's important for everyone to feel valued and to have that diverse and inclusive environment. So for the betterment of the company and for the sort of the betterment for the employees that we have within the business. Um, and then finally touching on sort of what these resource groups are and just so if you wanted um, more information or sort of any information that we have been unable to cover during the session. So we've got the supporting gender equality resource group known as GEN. We've got Enabled UK, which is our uh, support to our disability network. You've got VetNet, as Ellie mentioned before, uh, supporting our military community. You've got Embrace, which is around uh, cultural and ethnic diversity. Outlink UK for our LGBTQ uh, employees and Mindset, which is supporting mental health and well-being. Um, so yeah, that's all the resource groups that are available. Um, I guess this is the last slide from us. So um, I know you guys have posted some questions in the um, in the question box. If you have any more, feel free to drop them off in there, and then um, we'll make a we'll make a start in the questions. If that sounds okay, Stephanie and Ellie. Yeah, sounds yeah, that great. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So let me get the questions up. So firstly, can we please get the slides at the end of the webinar? Um, I will we'll, uh, distribute these to, uh, through sort of target jobs. We'll have um, we'll have a conversation internally and see if we can get them out through target jobs. Um, That's probably a question so, for Jessica. <laughs> see if yeah. we can get them put out through, through yeah. target jobs. But um, Jessica, sure she you... can advise us afterwards. <laughs> She's... Yeah. We'll try our best to get them out. Uh, what type of skills are desired at BAE? Is it lots of project management or design and engineering? Um, <laughs> I, I think with the, with the size of the company, um, so either you can apply for a project management graduate scheme or you can apply for engineering and engineering covers the sort of the all aspects of the engineering life cycle. We have placements, say, in the sort of the research and development, so the concept side of things all the way towards the end where you're integrating, which is what I'm in just now, sort of engineering integration, where you're integrating all the different aspects um, of the engineering life cycle into one. Um, you have project management as well. Um, and as Steph mentioned, Steph said, in HR, um, there's also there's different place there's different sort of schemes that you can apply for. So it's not just is it one thing or another. It's just we have loads and loads of opportunities available. And even when you're in the business, you're not sort of um, you're not assigned to just the opportunity, and you have the freedom because it's such a big company to move about to kind of um, if you're not enjoying say like a certain placement, or if you feel like for your own personal development you'd be better off in going to experience something else. The company is very supportive and allowing you to do that. Yeah, I think I just add to that. I mean, we have so many different opportunities, just from like business side, um, to business development, commercial, obviously HR, like Stephanie information management, procurement, supply chain, project management, and then obviously the engineering side, electronics, manufacturing, um, naval, software systems. You know, there is so many different areas you can go into. And obviously, depending on your skills and things, obviously loads of different areas you can enjoy. And as Rashad moved between, there's just so many opportunities. I think that's one thing about obviously being a global company is that we have all those different opportunities there for everyone um, to try. 
Yeah. Um, does that does that sort of answer your question? If you have sort of anything else, feel free to drop it in the drop in the chat again. Um, moving on to the next question from Patricia: Are there opportunities for people from a life science background? Um, life science that is that that's biology, isn't it? Look, is that? I think my first answer would be yes, because a lot of our schemes. Um, they ask for bachelor's degrees in sort of relevant subjects um, but even I think even our applied intelligence um, actually just um, asks for sort of Has 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 Ellie frozen for anyone? Steph, can you? Yeah, yeah, no, she's frozen for yeah. me as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll just wait till Ellie comes back online. But I think um, what um, I think where she was heading, she can advise her when she comes back. Is um, I think there's a we uh, we don't ask for any specific degrees and sort of, sort of specific backgrounds. I think we ask for sort of like a generic science or STEM related degree. Then it just comes down to sort of what you want to do, what you want to be a part of, and sort of like what you want to pursue. I think I think Ellie's back now. Um, sorry, I, <laughs> I think you cut off it. Ellie, can you, are you there? No, um, but no. I think uh, I think what what we mean is there's no. I think there's always opportunities mm. for people with STEM related background, and it just in the end comes down to what you want to do. Um, and if there's a certain sort of graduate scheme for you that you fancy, then um, by all means, as long as you have a STEM related degree, then uh, I'd encourage you to apply apply for that. I think that's the thing as well, because it is, you know, an entry level graduate scheme. There isn't that expectation that you will have a complete understanding of your role before you come in. It is designed to be supportive and for you to learn those skills. So there is lots of flexibility there, if, even if, you know, your experience doesn't precisely align to what the scheme is around. Um, that's kind of it. the point is that it does give people those opportunities to experience new areas as well. Yeah, I completely agree. Can you Sorry, hear me now? am I back? <laughs> yeah, 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 we can hear you. Now. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. network issues. Um, I can hear what you were saying there. You, you basically said exactly what I was going for, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so moving on. Um, another question from Mohammed is are they open to international students? I think um, from my experience, uh, one of my friends during the placement year, he was an international student um, and he was doing the sort of the industrial placement year with me. Um, I am unable to answer in terms of sort of op like sort of what that involves in terms of the process and sort of what is required. Um, but I guess Stephanie, Ellie, and unless you can answer, we could probably recommend the sort of the gen generic Curly careers or HR yeah, I think uh, what I know from my perspective, I think what I've seen is um, I think you have to be um, obviously have the right to work in the UK. Definitely. I can't remember exactly what that involves, um, but obviously being a defence contractor, uh, many of our roles are subject to both security and export control restrictions. So that does mean the factors, including your nationality, any previous nationalities you've held or your place of birth. Um, you know can limit some of the roles i think it's particularly some of the higher security level roles perhaps even like submarines i think for example you need higher security for those and that can have some limit but i know that we do have international people working within the company so there are definitely roles that are available i just wouldn't be exactly sure about the process and what the specific requirements of obviously the, the rights in the uk whether you have to be a citizen or whether um, I think someone mentioned it, having settlement status is enough. Um, I'd advise emailing uh, GART, so I think it's on our website, it's the graduate and uh, recruitment team uh, at BAE Systems, so you can find that on our on our website, if you look on the graduate page, the email address for that, I'd advise um, emailing them and they'll be able to advise you exactly uh, what would be needed for specific roles. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a comprehensive answer, thanks for that, Ali. Um, next question, Div 
apologies if I've pronounced that wrong. Uh, you're interested in the graduate programme, but feel as a PhD to be overqualified and possibly underpaid for the role. In terms of, uh, I think what it what it does is I don't think you can you can still apply to the graduate role, but I mean if you feel like you're sort of overqualified and maybe the the roles underpaid you still have the opportunity to apply for roles that are sort of out with the graduate scheme so you can apply for say like a grade d grade d and what i mean by these grades is you get sort of different grades of engineers you can apply for just like a normal role within a department rather than apply for the specific graduate scheme although you can still apply for the graduate scheme but then there is sort of levels and layers above for which you can just apply um normally for yeah, I think they're direct entry jobs, we call them. So mm. they're outside the scheme. They have obviously more of a flexible pay. I think the scheme is quite set on its pay. Um, so if you feel like that's not enough for your qualifications, you might want to look at a direct entry role and those will be less listed on our website, on, the, on our careers page, um, ones that are available at the moment. I think we do still see some people who have, you know, progressed slightly further in their career and they still decide to go into the graduate scheme purely because of the development opportunities, the, you know, accelerated support that is available. So it might just be a case of examining your circumstance. You know, if you're going into a new area, maybe you want, you know, slightly more support through that. And maybe the, the structure of the scheme is something that would work slightly better for you as an individual. So it does happen. But yeah, I completely agree with what was said before. You know, if you'd rather just have that direct entry um, route, then I would, I would definitely look into that as, as another opportunity yeah and just touching on the sort of the PhD aspect for those of you that are sort of deciding between doing a PhD and or coming on doing a graduate scheme we as a company also support getting a PhD whilst you're sort of on the job as well and I know this because a couple of my sort of friends in the graduate scheme are going through that route so whilst you're in the company you have the opportunity to sort of part-time do your PhD as well so if that's something that you're going for the company is um, supportive of that as well Uh, the next couple of questions, I think we've kind of covered them. So um, rules for international students and the pre-settled status. Um, Ellie, Steph, would you agree that we've kind of covered them and we'll move on? Yeah, yeah I believe so. Yeah. Cool. Um, are there still plenty of opportunities for engineering students who did not do a placement year? Would you say the majority and minority of people in the graduate scheme completed a placement year with the company? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, obviously, you do get the sort of the level of retention is quite high due to sort of the experience you get within the IP year. Uh, it's so sort of great. And you, if you do well, the retention levels are generally tend to be high. But I think there's no sort of um, hard and fast rule whether you have to do placements before or when you're applying and sort of when you go through the process. Um, if you have sort of like uh, the right qualifications, the right sort of experience, within university and just that general desire to, to get into the company then uh, I don't think it's a placement before um, yeah uh, I would say I wouldn't say the majority of the people that on the thing are um, are have done sort of placements before but um, I would say a good sort of about 50 60 percent do come back um, having done some sort of internships or placements etc that kind of thing yeah, there's no requirement for you to have done the placement year at BAE. I think in, in my cohort for this year, the grads, I think there's three out of 10 of us um, are returners, um, but the others are just come straight direct from the end of their degree. They haven't done a, a placement yeah. with us and we're all on the exact same sort of pages, get the same opportunities. It doesn't, it doesn't make a massive amount of difference, just that people who've been on the placement, yeah, like we, me and Rish, for example, we very much enjoyed it, so we decided to come back. So. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Ellie. It won't at all put you at a disadvantage. It's just about, you know, showing that you do have the, the skills and, and, and the uh, potential that's needed to go on to the graduate scheme. So I wouldn't worry about not having that placement experience. I know I personally didn't. And yeah, similarly in, in, in submarines, a number of the individuals in our scheme haven't had that experience. So it's not at all a, a prerequisite. Yeah. Um, are you able to tell us what sort of things you're looking for in autumn? automated assessment process. Um, so I think the process itself, um, you go through some sort of, sort of psychometric testing. So kind of like this generic uh, psychometric and situational judgment. And then you do a video interview. Um, then it's sort of like, a, it used to be, a, when I done it, it used to be sort of like a face-to-face -face interview, um, which may sort of been replaced over Skype or something these days. Um, 
but that's the process and i think it's it's pretty much the sort of the same as in when you're applying for any other job it's we want to see you care about the company you have sort of and um you have sort of an interest in the company and you have an interest in developing yourself you have sort of high enthusiasm that kind of thing and you're really interested in working for us and have the sort of the right drive and the motivation to do well yeah, I'd sort of echo what Rish said. A number of things will be similar across different businesses in terms of what they're looking for. So um, just make sure that you are prepared if you are, for example, doing that video interview side of thing, the pre recorded video interview, that you do have a good set of examples that show the skill set that's aligned to the role that you're looking to do, that you are prepping. Uh, I know there's something called the STAR model, which works quite well. So make sure that you are really clearly identifying where in the past you've had a, a significant impact on the teams that you've worked with, that you are demonstrating as well um you know the, the behaviors that they're looking to see um in graduates and do have a look you know around around the site there's lots of good information on you know our approach our approach to sustainability for example uh, dni which we're discussing now but really just get a good sense for the company and what they stand for and, and i think that will sort of shine in any interviews that you have both video and in person as well yep agreed um so next question, touching on sort of our topic for today is what in what ways might diversity be encouraged by BA systems through the job application process? Um, I think the fact that the, I think the way it's encouraged is that we when you come through this or the job application process, you're not judged on anything. You're not judged on things such as your race or your sort of belief or your cultural beliefs or your sort of ethnicity, your race, your gender, your sexual orientation. You're not judged on any of these things. You're judged on sort of the things that actually you can, can you, that you sort of your experience and your qualifications that you have. So to me, that's the that's how we're sort of encouraging diversity is uh, we we're not um we're not sort of judging anyone for anything that they uh, sort of and any of the sort of the things that i mentioned previously but rather than um the things that can control in terms of their education in terms of their experience that kind of thing I think beyond that as well, we do sort of actively look at the data for who we are hiring and, and who we're bringing into the business and trying to understand, you know, why we might have lower levels of, of representation in different areas to make sure that there isn't anything in, in the way that's, you know, proving an obstacle or that is perhaps, you know, deterring talent from, from all sorts of backgrounds, experiences as well. So we are actively looking into that process and improving it all the time. I'll just add one last point for that. I think um, a little bit different point, but... Um, we also have with our um, job application process, um, if anybody has any sort of special requirements or uh, anything that could sort of maybe sort of prohibit them um, in performing to their best during the exercises, for example, any sort of disabilities or anything that you feel, you know, you might need some extra help with or I say certain requirements, um, we are we encourage you still to apply and also to contact our, our, our graduate um, recruitment team and they can help sort out um, any sort of help you might need for the application process so that everyone gets an equal footing when going through that application process. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope that answers your question, um, Ross. Thank you for that. Um, and then the next one, do you have to be studying a STEM degree to get into an industrial placement at BA Systems? Um, I'm unsure of the logistics as to whether you have to be studying sort of a STEM degree exactly, whether to get into an IP uh, at BA Systems. But from my experience, a uh, majority of the people that do come on the IP year uh, tend to have uh, tend to be in the sort of the STEM field. I don't know, Ellie and Steph, if you've had sort of different yeah. experiences. I would say no. It doesn't. You doesn't have to be a STEM degree. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're going for some of the engineering roles, then STEM is is sometimes preferred but for all obviously the other business roles um and and you know any sort of other roles in the other parts of the company then they're quite open it does not have to be a stem degree if it's a relevant degree and you have some really good experience that's come out of it that will be useful for the company yeah it does not have to be stem to get on the industrial placement but like i say with engineering uh having some sort of uh, stem element is obviously an advantage in in those roles yeah, definitely echo that. I think in terms of the people on our scheme who who have gone on industrial placement, there is a, a clear correlation there between, you know, having certain, something associated with STEM and, and entering that placement. So, um, but yeah, obviously, like you said, Ellie, other ways that you can demonstrate those skills. Yep. Um, and then lastly, from Duncan, um, I think this was covered 
in the question before about the sort of the assessment process, the SJT and it video interview. Um, uh, in terms of sort of hints and tips for the video interview, I think um, for me generally, to be honest, it's just having that. Uh, you, we want to see you being enthusiastic about what you're applying for. You have a good knowledge of sort of what we do as a company sort of for products or customers that kind of thing and just having that real drive to be we want to show that we want to see that enthusiasm um, I think that's why personally would be like the tip from me um, Steph Haley again if you want to add feel free yeah, no, definitely. I think that does sort of carry well in, in a video interview scenario, um, you know, just sort of being prepared, uh, making sure that, you know, like we said, that you are passionate about the company, that you do understand the company's values. Also worth, you know, understanding what, you know, if you look into sort of a SWOT analysis of the company, understanding what the strengths, weaknesses, you know, opportunities and threats are, that can be a really good thing to bring into your video interview as well, if there is an opportunity to do so. Yeah. And just being just being sort of genuine and with your responses when you're sort of doing your answers, it's very easy to tell sort of what answers are rehearsed. But just to kind of have that sponta spontaneity and just have just be genuine with your responses, share your real life experiences. That's the kind of things that we want to hear. Um, where's BA Systems located? Um, so we're a global company. Uh, we have sort of um, base and all the way throughout the UK and um, around the world but predominantly for my role so we should be located in Wharton and Samsbury so in the sort of the north of England um, so it just depends there's locations worldwide but due to the sort of the pandemic as you can see we're all sort of working from home at the moment yeah I just add to that that it you know depending on sort of what sector would be because obviously we've got a lot of businesses in it, like say the air, maritime, land, electronics, AI, and they are across the whole country. Um, a lot of the sort of maritime services are in the south, Portsmouth, the Isle of Wight. Um, I think we've got naval ships, a few bits are up in Scotland, like the air is up towards the north. Um, electronic systems, I think, are in Kent. Um, so it's basically, I think, all over the country. If you have a look online, we have some maps that show all our locations, but we have uh, at least 20 or so, I think even more locations around um, covering all our different parts of the business. So if there's any particular areas you are interested in, go have a look on our on our website and it'll show you the map of which areas, for example, um, have the parts of the business that you are interested in. But yeah, I think um, if there's no more questions, um, thanks Mohammed. Um, thank you for, thank you to yourself and for everyone else to dial in, taking the time out. Uh, we hope you had a good session. We hope you sort of enjoyed hearing about your experiences and hearing about sort of DNI within BA Systems. And yeah, we wish, we wish you best of luck in your sort of future applications and um, your studies. <laughs>